A scathing report about a local Head Start program. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Denise Douglas. And I'm Rochelle Metzger. We begin tonight with a local story. Federal funding of the Prince George's Head Start program is being suspended after a scathing report of children being mistreated is released. This according to an investigation done by the Federal Administration for Children and Families. The incidents took place at the Head Start programs at Winship Wheatley Early Childhood Center, James Ryder Randall Elementary School, and Langley Park McCormick Elementary. In one case, a three-year-old was forced to clean up his own urine. In other instances, a teacher used corporal punishment on two children, and a five-year-old walked home alone. The programs will lose more than $6 million in federal grant money. School officials are holding a press conference this afternoon to respond to the controversy. A seventh body has been pulled from the rubble where the fire and explosion leveled several buildings at the Flower Branch Apartments in Silver Spring. All of the victims still have to be positively identified, which officials say is taking time because of the condition of the bodies. At the site today, investigators are looking for clues to help them figure out what caused that incident. A Montgomery County Fire and Rescue spokesman says the leading theory that natural gas played a role is still being looked into. So that's, uh, I believe, the leading theory. Any investigation is a process of elimination. So certainly uh, there was a, a pretty significant explosion. Uh, we believe that the gas may have had something to do with it. So investigators are looking at that. Of course, they don't have tunnel vision. They're looking at some other things as well. But again, that's the uh, primary focus. The police and medical examiner's offices are asking family members of the victims to give DNA to help with the identification. We could learn the cause and get a confirmation on the identities of the victims by the end of this week. Meanwhile, the Red Cross continues to work on relocating those displaced by the fire and explosion that we just told you about. Several dozen have been staying at the shelter set up by that organization. There they receive food, mental health counseling and other services. Red Cross spokesman Paul Cardin says that the process of finding housing can take quite a while. So recovery, finding a permanent place. Some people it's moving into a new apartment. Some people it's going to be going around for a while, looking at the resources and deciding where they're going to settle. If you would like to help the victims, check the county's website at MontgomeryCountyMD.com for all of the details. The bacterium Suedomonas is once again found at Prince George's Hospital, but not in the neonatal intensive care unit. Officials say water testing revealed the presence of the bacterium in one patient care area outside the NICU. The potentially deadly bacterium was detected in three infants last Wednesday, prompting the transfer of nine babies to Children's National Medical System in the district. Since then, Prince George's has been testing its water, and no additional patients have tested positive. The hospital has added new disinfection and treatment procedures, as well as a long-term monitoring plan. Current patients with high-risk pregnancies will be transferred to other hospitals for delivery. No secret, we've been battling lots of hot weather. Well, a new report shows that there have been nine heat-related deaths in Maryland this summer. The state health department says the latest victim was an adult male from Montgomery County. Nine victims were over the age of 65. So far, 11 heat advisories have been declared in Maryland this year. Assistance is on the way for Ellicott City businesses and property owners recovering from that devastating flash flood. The State Board of Public Works today approved two and a half million dollars for the small minority and women owned business account to provide short and long term aid. The funds will be used to make zero and low interest loans to eligible businesses so they can restock, repair and then reopen. The Hogan administration is also asking the Legislative Policy Committee to approve an additional $2.5 million from the catastrophic fund to help property owners affected by the fatal storm. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Rochelle Metzger. And I'm Denise Douglas.